Hi everyone, Dutch Reefer here. Welcome to this new Focus Friday video in which I will tell you something about uh, maintaining a stable uh, water temperature, which is very important for a reef tank because, as you can imagine, in the ocean the water uh, doesn't change temperature very often and very fast. So, it's uh, uh, also important for your tank to keep the temperature as stable as possible. Um, which is, can be quite a challenge sometimes if you live in a, a hot country or a very cold country uh, for that um, it's easier to uh, to heat up your tank because there's a lot of uh, uh, heaters that you can add to the tank um, be careful if you're using uh, glass heaters because uh, when they run dry for whatever reason they can uh, actually uh, crack and that will uh, can be a disaster for your tank so there's, uh, there's alternatives like titanium heaters or you can buy a, um, an, uh, a chiller which also uh, uh, heats up the tank and I'll show you one in a minute because I'm running one of those for about two years now. Uh, the big challenge, the bigger challenge is to keep your tank uh, cool because in the, in the summer it can be uh, quite a challenge when your house heats up to keep your water temperature uh, below the 26 degrees or 25, just whatever you prefer. Um, so some people run their tanks at 24 degrees Celsius, some at 25 and some at 26. It's a personal choice. It can also vary on which kind of uh, corals or fish you keep. Some fish that are corals that are um, that are adapted to what somewhat more colder temperatures, then you can keep your temperature around 23, 24 degrees. But if you're having a mixed reef tank, and then 25, around 25 degrees is uh, something to uh, to aim for. So, like I mentioned, uh, the hardest challenge is often to uh, to keep your tank from uh, to prevent your tank from overheating, which is why uh, uh, you have to find a way to uh, to cool the water down on uh, on hot days. So to do that, you can of course try to keep your house cool. That's the best solution. So if you have the opportunity to buy uh, like an air conditioning uh, for your house to keep your house below 24, 25 degrees, then you're all good. Um, but having a good air conditioning can be quite expensive. So um, like, uh, like more people, I think I have run a chiller on my tank and this chiller also uh, heats the tank up so it's actually a heater and a chiller combined but the most important part is that it uh, it cools the tank down on uh, on hot days when the temperatures uh, go above 26 degrees it will kick in cool it down to 25 degrees again and then uh, repeats the process so the water is always between 25 and 26 degrees um, well on, on hot days one of the things to consider when buying a chiller for your tank is that it needs uh, to uh, to the heat need to go, the heat needs to go somewhere. So uh, something that's not ideal in my tank, but it's manageable, is uh, first of all you need um, on the front that's where the air intake is. You need to be able it needs to be able to get fresh air. So for the reefer tank, there's a spot between here is a, like this kind of amount of space which it can use to uh, uh, to get clean air that will go in here and then the, it will cool it down using a, a cooling element and then the heat comes out the back so that's that's the challenge I've considered making a, a hole in the side of the tank to get a better output from with the hot air but uh, I contacted the Red Sea support they said it was possible but uh, not advised so the hot air is blowing out the back, so this cabinet will definitely heat up in the summer. And then you need to make sure that behind the tank there's enough room. And I can show you here, there's not a lot of room in my tank, like a, f a few centimeters here. Uh, so the heat can disperse from, from the tank. So it can, but it's not ideal. So ideally you should either have more space behind your tank or... Uh, a hole or something else or not put your chiller in the cabinet that's also an option of course so keep that in mind when buying a chiller it needs fresh air on the front and it needs to be, get rid of the cold the hot air uh, on the back so a chiller is uh, one of the most convenient solutions 
to uh, to cool your tank down. Um, so that's why I'm uh, I've uh, I've started using one. This uh, this one is uh, by a brand called Teco. This is a Teco TK500, which is uh, able to cool tanks up to 500 liters. Well, this tank is around 500 liters, 140 gallons. So that's uh, sufficient. It does the job very well. I've been using it for, like I said, about no, just nearly two years now. I bought it in the summer of 2016. It has been doing very well since. And uh, if you just leave it running all year, uh, because it's also uh, has an integrated uh, uh, heater, like I mentioned. So it's on 24-7, monitoring the water temperature. You can set it using the, uh, the controls. Like with most chillers, there's, the controls might be slightly different on a, on a different chiller, but all in all they're quite the same. Showing the temperature, being able to uh, set an offset. Um, so how much does it need to heat up before it starts chilling or cooling. Um, and yeah, that's it. There are other solutions to, uh, to cool your tank down. To cool your tank. Uh, which... Uh, are also uh, something you can consider. One of them is adding a, a fan on top of the tank. So one of the popular popular options is that you place uh, a series of fans around this side of the tank, or of course on the other side, which will then um, have fans that take air from the outside and blow the air all the way across the tank to the other side. This will do uh, two things. Uh, first of all, it will uh, blow away the uh, the heat that comes out of the water. So if the water is 25 degrees, it will disperse heat into the air. And then it will blow it out of the tank, away from the tank. Another thing is that the lights, of course, create a lot of, uh, a lot of heat. So you don't want to touch it because it's very hot, of course. But then the heat also radiates from it to the tank. And by using the, uh, the fans, it will get rid of that heat as well so it's it's a double uh, it's a double effect and it yeah it can cool your tank down by around um, I think one or one and a half degrees that's something you can uh, you can aim for another option which is a manual option is to uh, uh, to uh, put some uh, uh, bottles of water in the freezer and um, uh, whenever the temperature gets too hot, you can just put these frozen bottles of water in your uh, in your sump, and then uh, that will cool the water down slightly. Uh, I wouldn't advise this on uh, very large tanks because it's uh, it's a, it's a manual process and it will require a lot of uh, uh, handiwork. So you have to cool them each time and then uh, uh, put them in, and then they, of course, they they melt they melt quite fast when the water is 20, 25, 26, 28 degrees. Um, so after an hour or two you can uh, repeat the process. So it's a manual manual job which I wouldn't recommend, but it's an option nevertheless. So to give a recap, um, there's three popular options of uh, cooling your tank, or four actually. The first one, the most convenient one, to put an air conditioning in your house so your tank won't heat up that much. The second one is installing a chiller which will do it, which will control the temperature automatically to whatever uh, temperature you desire. The third option is to add a fence on top of your tank, which will dissipate the heat around one to one and a half degrees Celsius, if you're lucky. And the fourth one is a manual one where you add bottles of frozen water to your sump, which will then of course also have a slight effect on, uh, on the water temperature. So, if you have any other uh, options, uh, please feel free to, uh, to comment. Um, otherwise, I hope you, uh, you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.